Thomas Young thought light was a wave, but in order to prove it, he had to show that it exhibited wave-like properties, like diffraction patterns and the whole thing, so you get something funky like this. So he's looking for places, looking to how to show light diffracted or had some sort of interference pattern. So one of the things he wanted to do was to see if light was a wave, and he sent it through two slits, they would spread out as they go through and they would be interact with each other. So first he had to make two slits. So what he did was is he took a regular piece of glass, it's a piece of glass, is actually a mirror on it, but, um, and he put one slit here, okay, put another slit a little bit farther away, and now he has two slits and he's going to send the light through. So let's put this slit here. So here's our two slits. D is the distance between those slits. And then let's send some light through. So we need to send light through this one, and we need to send light through the other one. Oh, where's my other light wave? There it is. So we're going to send it through this way. Now the other thing that needs to happen is that these waves need to be the same wavelength, same wavelength or frequency, and they need to be in phase. So the word for this is coherent. So we needed a coherent source, which is a little bit tough in the 1800s, but he figured it out. And so then these waves now leave this source, or I said, we come through here, all right, and diffract. So that means they spread out. And so we wanted to see with, if this is true, then when they come out, they're going to meet somewhere, I'm going to have some sort of interference. But if light is a particle, like a penny, it'll just go through and you'll end up you know, with no diffraction whatsoever. So we needed to end up, we have to figure out what to look at over here. So he put his screen on this side. So remember, if it's particles, the light's going to go through and it's going to hit here. And the light's going to go through this side, let it go through this side and hit there. However, if it's a wave, waves are going to spread out and when they run into each other, I should see some sort of pattern. I should see some sort of pattern. So, but what should that pattern look like? Well, here's my two waves. They are at, they are in phase. They're both the crest right there. So when I put them here, well, let's move them in phase a little bit closer. Oh look, when they hit that screen, right there, with a crest from one and crest to the other. So I should see a bright spot right here. Let's see what's, what's red. Right, so I'm going to have a red spot here, because there I get constructive interference. All right. So that means the path length. So here's L1. Here's L2, the difference between L1 and L2 is zero. All right. But let's move on to one side or the other. So let's see, we had a we had constructive interference here. So there, there, all right. So as I move and look over this way a little bit, as I move down the light that comes through this slit and that slit, this light has to go a little bit farther to get out there. How much farther? So let's get a let's get a new uh, new uh, color here. So now here's my new L1 out there. So I'm going to have a bright spot here as well. Now what is that? What's happening there? That's where L1 minus uh, oop, that's L2. The absolute value of L1 minus L2. So here's L1. Here's L2. So L2 is the bigger one, but let's do it on the other side. Let's go down this way. L2, L1 is now longer. Over here, let's see, right there. Crest, that one, crest on that one. All right. Here, L1 and L2 is now one wavelength difference. It's absolute value, so that's why it's, that one works really well too. marker all over my hand. So it works really well here. So uh, so here L1 is longer and L2 
L1 is longer by one wavelength. Now over here, L2 is longer by one wavelength. So let's keep going. When I go down to the next one, this has got to go farther. L1 and L2 again. End up with another bright spot here. The same thing happens up this way. Up that way. Where now L1 minus L2, that absolute value is two wavelengths. So here, this number in front, this is zero. This is when it's one. This is when it's two. These are called the fringes. And these are the zeroth order, the first order, and the second order, and it goes off indefinitely. So those are the brightnesses that we should see when we are doing this. So let's just take a quick look at it again. So right here, I've got constructive interference happening because the path length is a difference. Path length is, there's no path length difference. Here there's a path length difference of one wavelength. So that means L2 had to travel one wavelength farther to get myself up there. Uh, when he shined it through, that's what he saw. And so now he was right. But now we can figure out what is the distance between these wavelengths and what is, what is this distance here?